Welcome to Handy Quilters Watch and Learn. Today we are going to be troubleshooting tension. So Denise, I just introduced you. This is Denise Dowdrick. I'm Hi. Christina Whitney and we're studio educators here at Handy Quilter. And Denise, we're going to talk about tension today. So. Yes. <laughs> Where do you start when you are setting your tension? Christina, that is a great question. I always start right here with the bobbin. I've got the bobbin case and a bobbin in my hands. And the reason I start here is if I have any future problems with tension, I know it's going to be on the top of the machine and I don't have to keep going back and forth. So where I'm going to start first is making sure I have an M-class bobbin to fit inside of my bobbin case. And I like to make sure I'm making, um, keeping the direction of my bobbin going correctly by making sure I hold my bobbin like a lowercase b. B is for bobbin, that's how I remember it. So it works great for me. I always think of the number nine. I know, lots but of people have thing. numbers. It's the same yeah. exact thing. You could also do Q is for quilt, which is a number nine, or B is for bobbin, which is a number six. So whatever helps you remember, we just wanna make sure we get it rotating the correct direction. And I also want to point out that you have a pre-wound bobbin there. I do. It's and one of the superior bobbins and you've is. taken your cardboard off. Yes, I've taken the cardboard off because I don't, this is what the cardboard looks like on both sides. I've taken it off on the top side because I, I don't want it getting swollen if I drop some um, bobbin, uh, some oil in my bobbin area and it'll soak up into this cardboard. So I've just removed that. So I'm going to put the bobbin in the bobbin case now and I have the bobbin case facing upwards. You can lay it down. I like having it over a soft surface because I don't want to drop this accidentally. And then I'm going to put my bobbin in. And I'm just going to grab that thread and kind of let it come around until it hits that slot on the side. When it hits that slot on the side, I'm going to just gently pull it down and around and it's going to get caught under this little spring here. And then I know it's in there correctly. The next thing I want to do is test my bobbin tension, and I'm going to do this every time I change a bobbin. So I'm going to just lay that in my hand, pull on the thread, and make sure that the bobbin will stand up in my hand. Yeah, that doesn't look like it's standing up. It doesn't at all, so I need to make an adjustment. So I have a little screwdriver here, and this comes with the bobbin, um, the bobbin winder. When you get a machine, it comes with everything you need. I'm going to adjust this little screw right here. The bigger screw is the one that is going to make the tension adjustments. Don't do the smaller screw, which actually holds that spring on there. So right here, I'm going to make a very minute adjustment. I want to tighten this up, so I'm gonna to turn to the right, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Love it. I'm just, did you see that? I just turned it maybe like two minutes of a clock. Really slight adjustment, okay. and I'm going to try again. So now I'm gonna pull up on that, whoops. It's trying to move, it's trying to stand up, but maybe I need just a little more tension. Yeah, a little floppy still. So I'm gonna make another very small adjustment here. And I need to actually get that screw in there. So that was about another two minute turn. Standing up much better. So at this point, I'm gonna make one very, very small, maybe one minute adjustment this time. Yeah, so I always say it stands up firmly in your hand. It's not gonna come off the hand, but it's not gonna try to fall back down. Oh, look how much better that is. Oh yeah, that's good. I can feel it. It's almost to the point where it wants to start coming off, but it's not coming off of my hand. So that's a great bobbin. Perfect. So I'm gonna just cut off that extra thread. I don't need it. And I don't feel like that's wasting thread. It would be wasting thread if I had bad tension and I had to unpick. And your time. And my time, so. Okay, so now you're just inserting I'm it down underneath. Inserting it, I'm making sure that I'm not holding the latch. And listen to this, you're gonna hear a nice snap. When I hear that click, I know my bobbin case is inserted correctly and the opening is facing towards the top and my latch is laying horizontal, but I did not hold that latch. That way it can, I can hear that snap when it closes. Okay, perfect. So we've got our bobbin set. Bobbin is set. Okay. And now we're ready to do stuff on the upper thread path. Yes. So I do want to mention to our viewers that today we are working on the Capri. The tensioning that we're doing here on the Capri applies to all of our long arm machines. 
as do most of our videos. Almost everything that we Absolutely. do, you can do on the mm -hmm. stationary machines as well as the frame mounted machines. So this one we're using um, just for the ease of showing the bottom of the tension because we can flip this over a it's lot easier than the It's going to be very stuff. easy to yep. flip over and see the back side. Yep. So that's okay. a great tip. Okay, so what is our first thread that we're playing with today, Christina? We are going to play with Magnifico. It's a trilobal polyester thread. And I'm going to point out something here real quick. We are using our horizontal spool pin. So anytime that we're using a spool of thread rather than a cone, we like to use this for the delivery system. And you might not be able to see, but we have the thread coming straight off and into our thread guide. When you're using the horizontal spool pin, you are not going to go up through the thread mast. You're just going to come straight over to the thread guide and then make sure that you are following that same thread path. So it looks like you've got it threaded nicely. Let's see how I it sure stitches. Hope so. Let's see how it stitches. So uh, now because we're starting with a 40 weight thread, I made sure that my needle matches the weight of the thread. You choose your thread first and then you choose your needle. So for a 40 weight thread, I'm making sure that I am using a size 18 needle. And we have information available at handyculture.com to help you determine which size threads and needles work together. Okay, those needles have a lot of information on them. They what are really the two do. important things that we need to look at on Okay, that what we need to look at, the main Let's thing. Let's see if I can zoom in here a little. Okay. Okay. Right here, we need to look at this number here. You see where that says 134 on that needle package, Christina? Yeah, it might be a little fuzzy, but yeah. A little fuzzy, but trust <laughs> me, it says 134, and that is the type needle that we need to use in our handy quilter machines. It is a system 134 needle. The other important number that we need to know is the size of the needle that we're using. So if you look over here, this is the size. It says 110 slash 18. Now I mentioned we're using a size 18 needle and I'm referring to this number here. On your domestic sewing machine, we refer to the number over here, the 110. And the reason it's important to know that these two numbers work together is sometimes on different types of thread, like the thread we're using today is on a spool, the spool is going to say the domestic machine size number that we need. We want to use a long arm needle, however, so we're going to refer to the size 18 there to make okay. sure we have the right needle in there. And it also tells us if we're using a sharp needle, a high speed needle, or a um, That's right. ball point. Absolutely, so down here there is an R, and that R means that I'm using a regular sharp point needle. Yeah, just trust us on this one. It's fuzzy, <laughs> but it's there. So R means sharp, FG means ballpoint. Ballpoint. MR is our high speed. That's our high speed needle, and you would want to use that in our, in our infinity, or if you are a very high speed quilter using one of our other machines that can go at very high speeds. Yeah, and you can use any of these needles in any of the machines. They, they all are interchangeable, as mm -hmm. long as they're in that 134 system. Yes, that is the most important thing here to know. Okay, so we match the needle size to the thread that we're using. That's right. We also have a nice chart over here that, never mind, I lied. We do have a nice chart that is on the screen of a lot of our long arms. It's not on the Capri Absolutely. screen. Absolutely, it's not on the Capri screen, but if you are um, an owner of an Infinity, a Forte, or an Amara, you are going to have that information available on your console of your machine. Um, and it'll be under the information link. So you'll look for the eye in the circle, and the eye in the circle will say, hey, here's some information for you. And it's going to talk about needle sizes, thread weights. Um, there's even a cheat sheet there that shows you how to thread your machine, yep. shows you a lot of information there. And it can all be found on our website as well for Absolutely. everybody. Absolutely, yes. So that information is available. Com. Okay, so we've talked about needles, we've set our bobbin tension, we checked our thread path. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I'm just getting anxious to stitch. I know you're getting anxious to <laughs> stitch, but before we put stitches on our real quilt, we want to check our tension first. Okay. It's one thing to know that we made these adjustments. Let's make sure they're the adjustments we wanted and that it's going to work for the materials we're using. So let's take a few minutes to do some stitches. Okay. Um, so, and as I'm stitching, you're going to notice, Christina, I am making um, little circles or corkscrews and little points. So maybe little crescents or stars and little circles. The reason I'm stitching that way 
is if tension issues are there, that is how they are going to show up the fastest. If I just stitch straight back and forth, my stitches might look just fine. But once I go into a curve or try to make a point, that's where tension issues really show up. So I'm just going to start there because I want to see if there's any problems. Okay. So let's get stitching. Okay, so I'm gonna start stitching and doing um, some little circles, little loops, little crescent shapes, because that's where I'm gonna see tension issues. So I'm going to bring my bobbin up first. So I'm holding my upper thread. There's my bobbin. I'm going to go ahead and grab the two of them together and I can start stitching. Okay, before right you stitch though, let's talk about those thread colors that you have. I noticed you were you using the contrasting that. colors. Yes, so I have yellow in my bobbin and pink up top. And I'm doing that because I want to see the contrast for this video. On a real quilt, I would make sure my thread colors were the same. I might use a 60 weight bobbin thread like I'm using today and a 40 weight on the top, that's just fine. I mix things up all the time. I use a lot of 60 weight in the bobbin, but I wanna make sure the color matches whatever I put in the, the top. So I would have a pink bobbin on a real quilt to match my pink upper thread. And why is that? Because if I have tension issues, they're not going to show. They're going to be way less apparent. I'm also probably going to have a busy fabric on the back of my quilt. No one's going to notice if I have tension issues. But of course, we're gonna show you how to not have tension issues at all. Perfect, okay. So here's my two threads. I'm gonna stitch a little bit. And there we go. Let's flip it over and see what that looks like on the back side. So on the back side here, let's bring my needle up and we'll just pull that off to the side here. You can see that I'm having some tension issues here. I've got pink thread, which I know is my top thread, poking through at the points, and I've got these this eyelashing here. You see how those look like eyelashes? Mm -hmm. Now the problem here is not my bobbin, because remember, we set our bobbin tension first. So the problem's the upper thread. I need to make an adjustment to the upper thread to make sure that I can get that pulled up to the top. The bobbin's just fine. We're not going to adjust that. Perfect. Let's look at our chart that we have. We're going to put that up there. And it shows the different positions of the top thread and the bobbin thread and what some of the problems could be and the solution for it. Yes, and it's really, really handy to have that available. You can find that chart at handyquilter.com or if you have an Amara Infinity um, or a Forte, we have thread information available there too but troubleshooting guides are available on the Handy Quilter website. Okay, so according to our chart, if the top thread is showing on the bottom, that tells us that the top thread is too loose. So we're going That's to need right. to tighten it. So I'm gonna tell that thread it needs to pull its weight, it needs to tighten up, so we're going to tighten up here. Ooh, I see something wrong. <gasps> What's going on, what do you see? Look, our thread is not, threaded properly. It's not even in our tension disc. Oh, okay. So we need to get that in the tension disc. I'm going to bring it down and around and then I want to make sure it snaps in this tension disc. Now, when I adjusted the tension earlier, I tightened it up a lot, but now I've got this so tight that the thread won't even go in there. It's just kind of laying outside the, the disc. So make sure when you're adjusting your knob here that your thread is actually in between, I'm gonna actually use my little scissors here to help me make a loop. I wanna hold my thread like dental floss. I'm gonna floss it up into that tension disc. You see how tight that's actually mm -hmm. going up in there? And then I'm gonna make sure my thread here goes over the top of that check spring. This check spring here is actually what allows that thread brake sensor on your machine to work. It'll pass by a sensor on some of our machines. So if it's not, if that check spring's not moving and the thread's not in there, that feature won't operate correctly on some of our machines. So I want to show them an example of what happens when your thread is not through the tension disc. Okay. And this doesn't happen all the time because our, our last example showed that that's not the case. So Denise, I want to pull out this other sample. Oh, this that's is an example of what <laughs> Sometimes happens if your thread is not in the tension disc. And wow. we, we intentionally left that thread out so that we could see. If you ever come across this, it's 
99.9% sure that your thread is not in your tension disc. I agree. And, and you can see those you nice can really little see that. loops and craziness. And of course, here on the Capri, we can flip our sandwich over to look. On your frame mounted machines, it's trickier to flip the fabric over. So what I like to do before even flipping it over is I'll feel it. I could absolutely feel that on the back side of the quilt and know there's a problem. Yeah, so let's reiterate, this is the bottom of the quilt. Mm -hmm. So you're not gonna see that. So if we flip this flip over, over, you I can see the top. And you can see I've got some little... Some little issues on issues, the top yep. there. But with so. my hand underneath, I can feel that. And, yep. and there's definitely a texture change. Yeah, I call that the fingernail test, where I just take my fingernail and just scrape across where I've quilted. And if I feel any kind of bubbles or pokies or anything, I know that I need to be doing some adjusting. Yeah, that that's a big one. It might not always It's not be always that, that extreme, <laughs> but yeah, there's going to be an issue. Okay, so it looks like you've got it threaded properly through the tension guide. I've got guide. it threaded properly through the tension guide, so we could do a little more stitching. Let's go ahead and take a look there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move to a new location actually. I'm going to bring up my bobbin thread and cut that off. Okay, should I mess up your tension for you and not tell you what I'm doing? Well, I don't know. Let's actually, let's just see how we do now that we've got it snapped back in the tension disc. Let's okay. see if that was enough to make, make a difference in our stitching. So I've got both the upper and the bobbin thread in my hand, holding it together. Oh, oh boy, what happened? Well, oh, no. I think what happened, remember, it was so, so tight in there. Yeah. It actually held back and made our thread break. So. This is another issue with tension. So, exactly. So we're going to correct that. And just from right here, I can feel that and feel, wow, it's it's really pulling a lot. So I wanna make an adjustment here. I'm gonna loosen that up just enough to where I can really get my thread sandwiched in there in between those discs. I've got, you know, just kind of like dental floss. We just wanna pull it and make sure it's going all the way in there. And now I'm just kind of pulling my thread not from the needle. I don't ever want to pull it from the needle. I'm pulling it from from past the tension disc. And I can feel there's still tension on my thread. So I can feel that it's in between those discs. Okay, and I always recommend to people that when they're, after their thread is broken, that they always check the thread path. Yes. To make sure it's correct. Okay, so I'm just re-threading the eye of my needle okay, there. Okay, let's check the thread let's path here. Let's look at that thread path here. So sometimes when the thread breaks, it kind of comes out of certain guides does. and stuff. So right here, I'm gonna start and make sure that I've come through and wrapped around my guide there. I've come through the guide here. I'm here in between my tension disc. <gasps> Looks like I've still missed something. You see this check spring? I've missed that. Yeah, so that's... I'm just going to come up here. I can't get my fingers in there, so I've got a little assist from my scissors. I'm just coming up over that check spring. Oh, that looks I've good. I've got that. That's great. Now I'm okay. going to pull. And the that rest of the thread path looks good. Very smooth all the way through here. Amazing. Great. Let's bring up our bobbin thread again and just give that a test. I think my bobbin's still connected below. So I'm just gonna snip that. And I like that the Capri allows us to pull our fabric back and check that. On, on a frame mounted machine, you would just need to loosen it up on the frame a little bit to pull that out. Okay, so there we go, so much better except it's not and something's caught underneath so okay so i've brought up my bobbin thread i'm going to hold both threads in my hand while i start stitching so let's take a look there and flip that over i'm just going to break those two threads flip that over it's looking quite a little quite a lot better than how it did before. So I know it's threaded correctly this time. It's in the tension disc. So we just need to make a, a small adjustment at this point. It, it's really, really close. It's just pulling a little bit at the points. 
And if you had the threads that match colors, you wouldn't ever even see I probably that. wouldn't even see it, and I might not make an adjustment if, if I didn't have those contrasting threads. And and that's okay, because a lot of times the, the batting is going to help those, those threads meet together in the center, and that wouldn't be as apparent if my thread colors matched. Okay, so do you want to see what it looks like if we have our top thread too tight? Yes. Okay, so let's make another adjustment here. Remember I said a small adjustment was about 30 minutes? Let's make a big adjustment, maybe two full root rotations. Oh, let's go for four. Okay, let's We're gonna go be wild for and crazy. four. Let's okay. see if we can snap that thread. Let's snap that thread. Oh, yeah, that feels really tight. Okay, so maybe let's, slowly stitch. Let's slowly <laughs> stitch, I agree. Okay, so I'm always going to bring my bobbin up first. There's my bobbin. My bobbin's really great. We didn't make an adjustment there. We tested that tension first. So let's see what the top looks like. And we're gonna start slow. Okay, so I'm seeing some yellow thread. Not a lot, but see how my stitches kind of look flat and not really defined? And I can see here at the corners, I can see some of my bobbin thread coming to the top. So do we need to make an adjustment to the bobbin, Christina? Nope, the bobbin's already set. We only exactly. adjust the top. Exactly, it's just the top. And I bet it looks great on the back. I don't know if you can Let's see that. Let's lift that let needle me, up. Let me bring that needle up and get that out of the way. Looks great on the back. Fantastic. I don't see any pink don't except that first anything. little start point. So the back looks great. Back looks great. So, so here's one of the tips that I have. When I'm testing my tension, often I will try to tighten it up so that I can see my bobbin at the top. And then I will just relax it down, just loosen it just a little bit so that it sinks down in that batting. And then I'm not trying to crawl underneath my machine to see the bottom. That is a great tip, Christina. I don't like crawling under my machine. So just knowing I could back off on my upper tension once I see those little points. If I just back up up here a little bit. So I'm going to loosen this. That was three 30 minute turns looser. Let's see what that looks like now. Okay, let's hope for some perfect tension so we can start stitching. Always going to start by bringing my bobbin up. I hadn't actually remembered to cut my bobbin, so we had a little hiccup there. Okay. That's real life quilting right That's there. That's real life quilting. Okay, so let's test again. Let's take a look. I'm going to do points here because that's what's showing the issues mostly at this point. Let's bring that off to the side. So up here, I don't see any yellow. That looks fantastic. Let's see what the back looks like. On the back, I see just the tiniest little bit of pink. And if my thread color was the same, I wouldn't even notice that at all. That looks fantastic. I would be really happy with that tension. Perfect. I'm gonna snip my bobbin this time since I'm down here and remembering. So again, I think that I think the thing to remember here is we're always going to start with our bobbin tension first. We're always going to make sure our bobbin case is clean. We've tensioned, we've inserted our bobbin correctly. We've tensioned our bobbin to the point where the bobbin case will stand up in our hand while we're pulling that upper thread. And then any other adjustments that we're making when we have poor tension, they're going to happen at the top of the machine. So it's either going to be something to do with our needle, our thread path or the tension dial on the upper thread. It will not be the bobbin problem because we took care of that before we even started. So that really eliminates a lot of the, the tension tug of war. We, we don't need to worry about that if we start with the bobbin. And again, we have those tips available for you at handyquilter.com. We've got a whole troubleshooting chart there to help you get through tension issues. So Denise, thank you for all of those tips and for stitching for us. Hopefully that will help you with some of your troubleshooting for your tension issues and we're glad that you joined us today. Make sure you like and subscribe and join us next week.